Good morning, Good everybody. Morning. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. What a beautiful morning it is. It, well, it's sunny. You've it's been out in the garden. Sunny. I've been out in the garden, sorting my shed out. Uh, yeah, you'd like that, Gareth. When we get to you, we'll, we'll talk about sheds, maybe. We're not talking to Gareth. We're not talking to Gareth. We're not even talking to Gareth yet. No, no we're not. No. Well, good morning, uh, Stephen Elizabeth. You're there very early. Welcome to you. The Hodgins family, I think, are here. Good morning, morning Ian, mate. Catherine, Ellie, Christopher, Charlie, and, and Lucy. Chris Whitty. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that's, that's that's Ian, isn't it? Yes. Great to see you all, all right. this morning. Wonder what your week's been like, everybody. I think there's been a few birthdays. So happy birthday to those who've had yeah. birthdays in the last day. Bumped into Anne, didn't we? We did. On the Anne, Anne Barry. Yes, it's all Anne and Barry. Fish and chips on the Barbican, I think. So. And um, Veronica and a chap I used to work with. Every, was, everyone was, was on, on the, the Barbican, Barbican yesterday. yesterday. Everyone was on the Barbican. Yeah, hope you got out and about in the sunshine yesterday, everybody, even if it was just outside in the garden or outside. It is, it is just beautiful, isn't it? Spring tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, first of March is officially spring, although your wonderful diary said it was something like the 15th of March. 15th yeah, of March, the 20th of March. Or so I'm going for tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Ian. And hello, Sammy. Special Sammy. Sammy says hello to me every morning. Oh, Joseph's saying, I'm just waiting for Dan. There's Dan Norton. There we go. Everyone's saying They're hello to me. Here. They're all here, all watching us, making complete fools of ourselves, which is uh, something we do particularly well, I think. Can I mention Mercy Church now? Is that okay? Am I if you know must, that? Gareth yes. will be raising okay. his eyebrows, but never mind. Um, it's Messy Church. We're going to try for a Messy Easter. We did Messy Church a couple of weeks ago on Zoom, and actually it was, it was really lovely. We really were able to share with the families and we had conversation. So that was great. So we're going to try it again for Easter, maybe on Zoom, maybe in the building. Who knows? We're just going to kind of you wait and see. You can be rest see. assured it will get organised. We will it get, will get it will be organised. But we need some help with the craft things again, everybody. You'd be disappointed, wouldn't you, if we weren't <laughs> asking you for something for craft? Yeah, Pete Duckett's already been asked and he's already working. So Pete, well done, mate. Save me a job. So here's what we need, everybody. We need wooden pegs. pegs. If you're in pound shop and you want to buy us a, a some wooden pegs, that would for be a great. Pound. They are a pound. It'd be a pound, wouldn't they? Well, or you might have a load each. sitting yeah. around at home. Well, they shut up. Wooden pegs, everybody, would be lovely. And see these sort of small pots, the ones that you would have coleslaw in or um, creme fraiche or even clotted cream. I think, or hummus, like perhaps, for hummus. hummus. If we lived in Ivy Bridge, we'd have hummus. Yeah, we? okay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or this kind of size, but these size plastic pots, please, for we're going to um, decorate them with pegs, put a plant pot inside, plant seeds, so uh, new life. That's kind of going to be the, one of the themes of, uh, of the Easter Messy Church. So Good. if you yeah. could... We would be uh, really grateful on the messy church team. Shall I bring him up now? Um, just yeah, one last it. time. He is here this morning, Terence, and it's probably his very last public last appearance. Last public I appearance. Imagine. So been, I just thought he ought to appear. He's been retired. He's been retired. You wouldn't be retired. I haven't got my hand in his pocket, so he can't even do anything. <laughs> you don't do that. Don't give your trade no, no, secrets he's not away. No, he's real. That's yes, true. He's absolutely, actually real. Yes. So, yeah, so for the very last time, Terence is uh, on screen. So he took part in Messy Church. If the rest of the church are wondering, have I had a funny turn? It's not a funny, well, it probably was actually. Funny... But anyway, um, so this was Terence, everybody who speaks. And Zoeana actually has his yeah, friend yeah, um, yeah. called Tilly, um, but Tilly's not here today, sadly, no. Just he had a sleepover, didn't he, with Tilly, I think, Terence? <laughs> I, yeah, so. I think he did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was against lockdown rules, though, I think, actually. So we won't tell anyone. We're not publishing this live, are we? We're not going live yet. No. Okay. Anyway, Terence, there you go. You've had your moment. This is the real church, rather than the messy church live. This is the real church live, so you've really made it big time. Okay, you're going to go now? I think yeah, you should, yeah. Okay. yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so who's here? Julie and Alan Hello, in yes. Exeter. And sunny Exeter. Yes, Exeter is sunny. I'm sure it's looking good. And Phyllis and George, good morning to you, pair. Hope you're both well. And Pete Duckett. There he is. Hope you got your knife ready, Pete. Well done. Thanks for doing that for me, for us helping. George and Phyllis joined on the family they Zoom did, evening. Yeah, it was great, yes. The number of, of toilet rolls that George managed to gallant, yeah, balance that's on his right, head. Yeah. Was, Phyllis was, Phyllis was running around finding it? toilet rolls. It was fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, so, so that was quite a fun evening. George wrote the quiz questions, actually. That's good. Okay. George yeah, wrote the yeah, quiz yeah, questions. Yes, so yes. thank you again, George, for doing that. Good morning, Penny. You're walking the dog. What a great idea. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. Oh, I bet the dog's having a lovely time <laughs> in the sunshine today, yes. Morning, David and Margaret. Good to see you this morning. Hope things are well with you out um, Plimstock. 
Oh, Mark and Zoe Mark and excelled Zoe. herself yes, yes. at the family Zoom. Yes, Zoe she did, did yes. all the pictures. Well, I think Mark did pretty well as well. I think Mark did, Mark did his bit. He, he did. Uh, he suggested the film title. She had yeah, some films which Zoe never, some we'd never heard of. Them, a different, <laughs> different take of Pictionary drawing. It was good. Films it was very titles. good. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Zoe, thank you all for doing that. All on the white screen. It was very fun. good. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Charlotte and James. Good to see you. And Judith. I haven't seen Judith many times this week. I've no, you often bump into, bump into her once or bike, twice, but I haven't done this week, so that's, that's good. Hope you've got your junior church material, everybody. I know Alison has been sending things out for the lovely sparklers mm -hmm. and trailblazers. Um, it was a two-week session from what I sent you last week. And Morgan's Instagram post for the youth will be coming up soon, I'm sure. So lo lots of names are coming in. I'm missing them. I'm yeah. sorry. So lovely Morning, to see Trev. all of you coming in, Tim. Great to see that you're there this morning uh great so many coming in to watch um yeah. when you could be outside actually yeah, and watching this later yeah. so it's lovely <laughs> that you're actually there live and nigel and i not just talking to ourselves and gareth smirking in the background on the screen <laughs> and he is smirking there he is he's shaking his head now we can see him yeah veronica told me that um somebody that she watches uh, do something online they turned the camera around the other day because what you see is this kind of set picture that we've made just like Gareth's with his nice fireplace behind and the books all carefully chosen Gareth's books are so we make sure that we see what Gareth and his family are reading but when you turn the camera around you see the washing drying and the dishes in the sink and the st we're not going to turn our camera around but if we did so it is a strange thing yes. isn't it you are we would get a slap from our camera operative if we, we did, did it, that it he's giving me a dirty look he? now he's, he's, he's trying to look all serious around, now we, yeah. can just, we can see him or i can see the back of the screen but uh, we moved he's it there. by one he's centimeter there. just now <laughs> yeah. oh dear me that was bad wasn't it yes yeah. yeah. your daffodils were out of shot i think yeah, yeah the daffodils i've got the daffodils ready especially this morning so they're all in shot ready to go spring this morning, though, do um, do is it nearly time to go? We do the drone. Andrew's, Andrew's We're going to do that in oh, a moment. Oh, we we'll do that in a moment. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I've not dear. been well versed. We I've didn't been, have a production discussion. I've been doing other things this morning. <laughs> we didn't <sighs> have a production discussion before we came together. Yeah. So we're sorry about that. So what did you think morning, of Boris's Margaret announcement this Boris's week? Boris's announcement? Well, yeah, it think? worked all right. I'm still trying to plan the famous cycle oh, ride. Famous that is causing us a few problems at the moment. But I think we're nearly there with that. So the day before my birthday, we're um, we're free to. Um, Are you setting up? Oh no, that's when we're allowed to go and 21st do of June, So hopefully maybe. we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe travel up in March to see Roman. May, and, uh, Tim and Lucy and Roman. May is it? May. May. Yeah, I should know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Morning, Johnny. Talking about your mother-in-law. Yeah, my mother-in-law's up. We've only had uh, two or three phone calls, I think, this morning, haven't we? So that's, that's Flora. That fun. was Flora, Johnny. Uh, Flora in Flora, Canada. Flora. So good morning, very Flora. Early yes. In Canada, wouldn't it, Flora? So or late. Yeah, early. Could be late, could be very early. Yeah, could, could be, yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Good morning, Flora. I wonder if there's anybody else from other parts of the world watching us today. We sometimes see, don't we, some names from across the globe. So it is fantastic, Indeed, yeah. isn't it, that we can kind of communicate like this with, with folk around the mm -hmm. world. Yeah, so it's incredible. incredible. An yeah. incredible gift, really. And one of the reasons why um, the church, we're really thankful we've been able to buy some digital equipment. So we're yeah. going to be able to carry on doing this now for forever. So yep, from church, we... streaming from live from church um, at the same time is, um, yeah, it's going to be good. So we're excited that we'll be back in the church yep. relatively soon. But at yep. the same time, we can keep communication up with those who can't get That's into right. the building. Yep. On people around the world, Gareth's fan club up and down the country will still be able to uh, to listen to um, our services. And I, I don't know if the Bible studies are going to carry on online as well. Yep. But we're going to put them, yeah, they're going to be... Um, Put on back on online onto, onto on YouTube. Yes, that'll be done. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's fantastic. Good morning, <coughs> Auntie Vilma. Yeah, there she is. I hope it's is. okay out there in Plimpton today. You and your family are all okay. What a fabulous church family we've got, haven't we? Ranging right across the ages. Have we had any lockdown babies? I don't know if any babies have been born in lockdown. Not into church. Not I can't sure think. I can't any, think of any. any. No, no, I know a few that, um, before, perhaps. But, little um, Hannah's yeah. had her first birthday, and some of them yeah. have had, and some of them are going to look so grown up and so big when we actually get to see them for the first time. Because such a long time since we've seen people. Some of us are going to look a lot older and a lot greyer. <laughs> Looking a lot older, older and a lot greyer, long, long, long hair. Yes. For a while, but, um, <laughs> but it will be good to see. See Good morning, church, Anita. Um, yes, it is a beautiful sunny Sunday morning, isn't it? It's wonderful. Yes, that's. Uh... It's been lovely. It was lovely yesterday. It's been really good this week. I think the rest of the week is uh, looking looking pretty good as well. So that's that's all very nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And good to see some new names. We've got lots of different people joining um, on the, the Bible course. It'll be wonderful mm. when we can actually see people face to face, people that came through the online Alpha course and are now attending the Bible course. And maybe one day we'll we'll all be together in uh, in the church building and maybe even baptisms. I don't know. Is that a step yeah, too far? Yeah. But that would be really exciting, wouldn't it, to um, to see kind Ooh, of that there we new go. life. Uh, of course, John, Alex yes, and Kathy yes, John, you're right, they yep, had yep, Charlotte yep. last week. Yes, Alex, who used to work in the Soft Play Cafe, had their uh, baby just last week. So, there so was thank a you, John. Baby. Yes, thank you're, you're, John you're listening, Alex. which is good. Someone's <laughs> listening. It's very good. Thank you. It's all very lonely <laughs> here. We don't know. We're just getting the comments back. Are people watching us? Good morning, Good morning, Lisa. Lisa. Yes, hello. How is your dog? Hope the dog's yeah, doing the dog okay. as well, yes. I think Does the dog, the picture. Is it Romanian, the dog? I don't know. Does he come from Romania? Did he come from abroad? I think maybe... I wonder if he understands English commands <laughs> or whether Lisa's had to do a crash course in... Just shout loudly. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, Evie could tell, tell her. Evie, Evie could tell, Evie could tell, tell her what words... Well, Helena can saying. speak pretty well. Oh, yeah, Helena can speak. Helena can speak, can speak Romanian good. quite well. Do you so think you're going to get to Romania this year? The plan is to go in September, yes. We have a um, two-week window earmarked at the moment, which oh, right. people are trying to keep free, but we're just waiting for the final uh, final bits and pieces. It's still... Um, she's still listening. She, Helena's still listening. Well done. That's good. <laughs> So yeah, we hope we hope, we hope, quickly, to, we hope to get out. So yeah, everyone's uh, will have been vaccinated by then. It depends just depends on what the Romanian government allow for right. Trump, uh, for in entry to the entry to the country. So okay. um, maybe they'll be a bit slower in the vaccination. I haven't seen actually, so that's good. Morning, Christine, and the rest of the Jagos. How are we? Oh, hope we're well. Good to see that people over sixty can get their vaccine <laughs> now. So I shall be um, trying to get hold of that. So, yeah. So Although you have been in a trial, haven't you? I have so been you're, doing you're a trial. Johnson and Johnson yeah, Janssen Johnson, trial. Johnson, 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 trial. Johnson, 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 Johnson trial. And I'm not sure if I had the placebo no, or oh, the real no, thing. So no, I'm going to right. try so and find, find out, out this week. And then, then and get then, done uh, yourself. So that's yeah, good. Yeah, and that one's approved in America. It's a bit yeah, worried that yeah. nobody was going to approve <laughs> it. And then it was a bit pointless, really, if yeah. gone through the trial, really. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, so, so it is amazing. It's all coming through. It's all been very smooth, very Swift process. I think we're over over twenty million. I think now, isn't it? I think it must, be, must be must be there by today. It must be at least so twenty million by now. Yeah, so still good. a lot of people poorly though. So we've got to keep on mm -hmm. it, haven't we? Let's yeah. get these numbers right, right down because um, we don't want to ever to be. Well, not that it's nothing personal, church, but we don't want mm -hmm. ever have to be doing it. Have to be doing it like this again. We want to be back, don't we? With everybody enjoying fellowship and sharing and taking that good news out into the city. So we really look forward to doing that. Okay, Andrew, is it I'll just time? Just thank Lisa time? for the update on the dog. She listens to what she wants. So oh, okay. that's, that's good. So, um, <laughs> thank you, Lisa. That's great. She knows okay. what she wants. Okay. Sorry, thank you. So everyone, as we prepare for our worship this morning, we've got some wonderful images of our stunning city to share with you. They were captured on Andrew's drone this very morning at dawn. So I'm going to leave those with you now as we prepare for church. Be blessed this morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the scripture says, doesn't it, from the rising of the sun uh, to uh, the setting of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. And I uh, just saw those images uh, um, a few moments ago. And um, aren't they really inspiring and uh, stunning uh, and a wonderful way to begin our worship today, uh, remembering the goodness and the majesty of God, our maker and sustainer. So good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. Um, welcome to worship from Methodist Central Hall here in Plymouth. Um, it's great to have you here, whether you're part of our 
our uh, regular congregation or you're just kind of passing through scrolling on Facebook it's good to have you with us and uh, we hope that the Lord uh, blesses you and speaks to you today as we gather uh, together so we're going to sing um, uh, a wonderful song great is the Lord and most worthy of praise so let's join in together as uh, we lift up the name of the Lord God, the holy place, the joy of the whole world. is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. We bow down on our Your name on high, and Lord, we want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives, and Lord, we trust in your unfading love. For you, Lord, our God, eternal throughout earth and heaven above. Lovely, wonderful. Um, Indeed, we do want to gather together, lift up uh, the Lord's name together. Let's pray, shall we? And Father, we uh, uh, we thank you for your greatness and for your majesty. Just a a glance out of our uh, kind of uh, living room window today uh, reveals the beauty and splendor of all that you have made and reflects uh, the beauty and splendor of who you are. We uh, thank you for such a wonderful world and for all the uh, blessings uh, that flow from your hand to us uh, through creation. We worship you today and we lift your name on high. Father, we recognise as well that as we sing your praises and as we um, as we recall your faithfulness and favour to us, that so often uh, we uh, mess up, that we uh, play our part in, in ruining what you have made. And so often um, our attitudes and actions don't reflect your beauty uh, um, to other people. And so, Lord, we are sorry when we have not represented you well. 
We are sorry uh, for uh, marring your creation. And we're sorry when we have not uh, treated other people as those made in your image like we are. Uh, forgive us, Lord, we pray. Have mercy upon us. And we ask that you, in your great grace, would cover over all of our sin, uh, that you would uh, cancel and remove it. We claim that, the, that that is what you have done in the cross of Jesus Christ. And in his resurrection, you have defeated the power and consequence of sin forever. And so we rejoice uh, at all that you have given us. And we celebrate and give you thanks for your faithfulness and favour in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, good morning once again, folks. Uh, my name's Gareth. I'm the lead minister here at uh, Plymouth Methodist Central Hall in the southwest of uh, the UK. And um, uh, wherever you're joining us uh, this morning, you are really, really welcome. And it's uh, great to uh, have you with us. Thank you to Nigel and uh, Julie for warming us up and uh, uh, getting us going as we uh, gather together online for worship. Uh, the good news is that uh, we will be opening the church building in uh, uh, from next Sunday night onwards uh, for those that want to gather for worship. So our morning services will remain online for the time being. And um, we hope in a few weeks time to be gathering uh, at church in the morning. But initially uh, we are opening next Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Uh, for uh, worship at the building at Central Hall. So that won't be online. So online in the morning and then in person in the evening. You don't need to pre-register, but we will still need to take your details as we enter into uh, the premises. Uh, and it will be a service of communion. Um, so, uh, and you'll remember those of us that have been kind of doing our socially distanced communions during the autumn, that we've got these little um, two-in-one uh, emblems. Uh, so, you know, we don't need to come to the communion rail. People don't need to pass things around. So it's still socially distanced, still face covering, still uh, not able to sing together. But for those that um, are not able to access uh, the, the content like this online, um, uh, then uh, the building is open for them. So you may want to, if you're watching this and you're friends with somebody you know who can't access this, you may want to pass that notice on to them. They should already have it by next week, but uh, next Sunday night, 6.30, uh, we're opening up for evening services. Um, I think that's all the notices I uh, have to give at this stage. Um, and so we are going to move on to our This Time Tomorrow video. And um, and today we've got somebody who um, you may recognise. This is Paul Courtney, who uh, assists Nick in the uh, uh, leading of worship and, um, and helps her out uh, with the mingle as well on a Sunday. So uh, let's hear from Paul what he does uh, during the week. Hi, good morning. I'm Paul and I'm married to Nick and uh, you may, if you're a regular watcher of the PMPH live stream, recognise me and Nick from the, the mingles and the hosting of the services on some of the Sundays that we broadcast. Nick and I have been married for 15 years. We live just outside of Ivy Bridge and we have two children, Joe, who is 13, Eliza, who is 11. And uh, I'm here at my home office desk where I've been based for most of the last year. Normally in my day job as director of fundraising for Children's Hospice Southwest, I'd be traveling around the region, visiting uh, donors and supporters at our three hospice sites in Cornwall in North Devon and in Bristol, being part of a team that raises vital funds to keep our children's hospices open, supporting over 500 families a year as they contend with uh, life with a child with a terminal illness. And our hospice sites provide that respite care and that wonderful end of life care to families who face the unimaginable. But of course, this year has been different. And I've been based here instead at home at my desk um, instead of hours in a car, it's been hours at the desk at home, which has brought some great benefits in the fact that I've been able to see my family so much more, been home so much more. But of course, from a fundraising point of view, that's presented huge challenges. 
so many of the events and community activities that we would normally run just haven't been able to be possible. So if I could ask you to pray for what I'm doing this time tomorrow, it would be um, just that, that God would continue just to give me strength as I lead my team, uh, give me creativity and um, sources of inspiration as we seek to continue to find new ways to fundraise, new ways to generate those vital funds to be there for families when they need us most. And uh, as we all would pray um, that we would see an end to the hideous impacts of this pandemic. And, and a return to some of those wonderful things that we all so yearn for, being together, being able to be at events, being able to be out there in the community. Um, and if I could ask you, it would be wonderful if you could pray for those families that we've been working with over the last year, who have been shielding now for over a year um, and really are desperate to, to get out and live life again. So please remember them in your prayers. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, uh, Paul, for sharing. Let's uh, pray uh, for you now. Uh, Father, we thank you uh, for Paul and for the work of Children's Hospice uh, Southwest. Um, we thank you for all the families that they're able to support and provide um, such meaningful and uh, essential care for at some of the most uh, difficult times of their lives. Uh, we pray that you'd uh, continue to support those, the shielding and those that are vulnerable, uh, and continue to help Paul and his colleagues in uh, the raising and generating of uh, funds in order that this vital work can continue. Uh, we join with him and uh, with all of us, I imagine, in praying uh, for the uh, swift end to this pandemic. We have a roadmap out, uh, but we still look to you for your help and your acceleration of the end to the pandemic and all the awful circumstances that it's brought upon uh, the poor and the sick and the vulnerable. Um, we trust Paul and his colleagues into your hands, Father, and pray that you would bless their work uh, from tomorrow uh, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, through the rest of the working week as they serve. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man. It's been really great just to get to know different people and hear where they work. And um, uh, from my point of view, I often see people on a Sunday and I've kind of uh, have, have my kind of Sunday box of where they used to sit in the building or things like this. So it's been great just to hear how people are serving the Lord um, in the week as well, uh, which, of course, is where we spend most of our time, isn't it? Um, so uh, I'm really enjoying these uh, videos. Thank you, Paul. And uh, thank you to Johnny, who organises these uh, week in, uh, week out. Uh, we're going to come to our uh, reading this morning, which is from Mark's Gospel. It's the uh, passage set for today, and I think the words will appear on your screen. Uh, this is Mark writing. He says, he, Jesus, then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up, my cross, uh, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with his holy angels. Thank God for his word and ask that he would give us insight and understanding uh, as we explore it in a couple of moments time. We're going to sing before we do that. This is Amazing Grace. Shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and 
Thank you so much, uh, Penny and Paul. Penny looking uh, appropriately summery for such a bright and uh, lovely day as uh, today. Let's uh, uh, pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you for your word and we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit as uh, we uh, look into it, that we might see and hear and encounter your living word, even our Saviour Christ. For his name's sake we pray. Amen. So Jesus uh, says in uh, this passage here, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. And in the last uh, 12 months, it's getting on for 12 months since we've been sort of worshipping on and off uh, at home and uh, the, since the pandemic really kind of took hold here in the UK. Um, I've, you know, come along and uh, preached um, what I hope are uh, encouraging and comforting messages that uh, have helped to sustain each of us as we're living in these really uncertain times. And that's, you know, really important. Um, I, I, as much as anybody else, need the encouragement to keep going when things are uncertain certain and things are difficult. Um, today uh, I was sat um, uh, in my study trying to work out uh, how to preach a word of comfort and encouragement uh, from uh, these words of Jesus and it's really difficult uh, to find them uh, because here Jesus is making uh, demands and I use that word deliberately, um, the demands on each and every one of us who want to be counted as his own. And he offers little kind of reassurance. He offers little kind of there, there, it's all OK. He just sets a high bar uh, for what real discipleship means. Now, um, he speaks, first of all, by saying uh, uh, we must deny ourselves. Now, um, I, I guess the, the whole of the last year has meant that to some degree we've begun to get used to what it means to live in a bit of self-denial. Uh, we've be, we've become accustomed, whether we like it or not, to having to limit our desires and preferences, whether that is the inconvenience of um, uh, not being able to do what we would like to do, whether it's the the denial of uh, uh, doing what we're permitted to do for the sake of others, like we choose not to worship as a church at the minute because we felt that was uh, the, you know, that was a, an expression of loving our neighbour. So we took, denied ourselves in that way. Um, from the other end of the spectrum, real, real sacrifice uh, and suffering, like the families uh, that Paul Courtney is, and others are working with, who have had to limit themselves and hardly leave the house for the last year uh, because of their own physical vulnerability. So we've begun to know something about what self-denial means in uh, the last uh, year. Jesus says if we want to be his, deny, his disciple, we must uh, deny ourselves. Now, the whole of this passage that we're looking at today comes immediately after Peter's confession of faith. Um, if you just read back a couple of verses before the passage that we had, you'll see um, that Jesus says to his disciples, who do people say I am? And then he kind of fixates with this kind of uh, arrow gaze on Peter. What about you? What about you? What do you who do you say I am? And Peter faithfully acknowledges uh, that uh, Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, he is the longed for hope of Israel and the hope of the world. But the question um, that this passage uh, just after that event uh, is trying to kind of set for us is um, if Jesus is the Messiah, what type of Messiah is he? What is his messiahship like? And that question remains relevant for us 20 centuries later. What kind of God are we following? What kind of Jesus do we worship and are we devoted to? What kind of messiah is it that we uh, look for and look to? 
And for Jesus, he makes it explicitly clear in this passage here, uh, in this text, that the God we are aligned to, the Jesus that we follow, is one who makes radical and huge demands on the people that would be called his disciples. You see, and so often uh, we have become, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost before I think about anyone else, but we have become accustomed to a Jesus who meets our needs who comforts our sorrows, who provide for, uh, for our weakness, forgives our sins, and, and as one uh, Christian leader once said, strokes the sheep nicely. Um, that we reduce Jesus to something of a personal therapist or a life coach who helps us navigate life with a little bit more comfort and ease. And this is not the gospel, uh, the Jesus that the gospel writers present, and it's certainly not the Jesus that stands before us asking these difficult questions out of this text today. The Jesus we are confronted with here, the real Jesus, if you may, stands before us demanding an unswerving allegiance, even when it's uncomfortable and difficult. He stands asking us to put our comfort and our needs second to his, to deny ourselves and to walk after him, whether it is convenient or not. And I wonder whether anybody here watching this morning is in full time Christian service. Of course, the crux of that question is that everybody should be saying, yes, I am. Because discipleship after Jesus requires the submission of our whole lives to him. It will never be a hobby. It will never be a leisure pursuit or it'll never be a part of a part time endeavour. It has to be all consuming the very central core of who we are from out of uh, it's out of our following of Jesus that our values, our choices, our decisions and our ethics are all find their origin. It's not a, a kind of bolt on that we add to the kind of uh, uh, little bits of our lives, you know, one thing amongst many, it is the central core of who we are called to be. David Garland, who is a, a, a commentator on this passage, uh, said this. He said, one cannot live as a disciple the way many people watch television, sitting in a lounge chair with remote control in hand, ready to switch the channels whenever anything unpleasant, tedious or demanding appears on the screen. And it's really hard, isn't it? Because, you know, in the culture that we live in, whether it's in the social media world, whether it's on the TV world, as David Garland suggests, or in all sorts of uh, areas of life, there is so much choice that we can easily just sideline anything that makes us a little bit uncomfortable and choose something that fits our preferences more uh, easily. Um, and, you know, and that I, I recognize that in my own life uh, entirely. One cannot live as a disciple the way many people watch television, sitting in a lounge chair with remote control in hand, ready to switch channels whenever anything unpleasant, tedious or demanding appears on the screen. Jesus demands the submission of our very preferences to be put second uh, to his. He is the Lord of our lives. And demands, again, I choose the word demand deliberately. It's not invitation. The demand is that he is number one. As the famous adage has so often said, if Jesus, uh, Jesus is either Lord of all of our lives or not Lord at all. Jesus says, deny uh, yourself. He then says, um, to take up your cross. Now, for hearers of Mark, they would have been very, very sadly familiar with the awful practice of crucifixion, which was a common tool of execution for uh, the Romans. And uh, crucifixion was used for thieves. It was used for runaway slaves. Um, so it's far from being reserved for extreme crimes. In fact, some um, sort of historians and scholars of the first century suggest that along the roads of first century Palestine, a familiar sight would be somebody strung upon a cross uh, being left uh, lingering to a horrific death. So however barbaric um, the crucifixion, um, the, the method of crucifixion was, and I have to say it makes my stomach churn, it was a familiar sight 
for those people of the first century. So when Jesus says you've got to take up their cross, they're not thinking, oh, that's an interesting image and metaphor. Uh, they're, they're well and truly aware of what he is meaning. And Jesus is saying, he goes in verse 31, doesn't he, to talk about the fact that the Son of Man, this Messiah that Peter has just affirmed, um, will have to suffer. He sets out the fate that is due him. Um, and uh, in doing so, the fact that the Messiah will come and have to suffer and die, he is completely subverting. He's turning around entirely the expectations of what Messiah is and was for the faithful Jews of the time. You see, the Christ, that's the Greek word for Messiah, uh, was seen as a winner, a champion. He was to come and reign in grandeur, conquering the enemies. And Jesus throws all of those expectations out of the window when he talks of the Messiah that comes to suffer and who comes to die. But it is to be willing to endure uh, the same suffering. It's to be willing to endure the path of defeat at times that Jesus calls us to. The demand, not an optional invitation, is to take up our cross. And mean, and that means that the disciples of uh, Jesus, therefore, are willing not just to embrace a life of inconvenience, but also of suffering, should it be required, for that is what lies ahead for Jesus. It is the taking up of the cross, says David Garland once again, that separates disciples from admirers. It's the taking up of the cross that separates disciples from admirers. One of the big concerns for me as a, a Christian leader in the 21st century Western world is that so often uh, we peddle uh, uh, a message uh, that Christianity solves all our problems. And we see that especially in uh, the kind of churches that propagate what we sometimes call the prosperity gospel or the kind of health and wealth uh, teaching, which kind of uh, says, you know, if you've got an issue, ask Jesus, he'll parachute you out of it and all will be OK. If you're poor, trust in Jesus, he'll lift you out of poverty and his desire is for you to be uh, always healthy and always uh, rich. So Jesus never, ever promised that he would come to make our life easy. He never promised that he would send us into the kind of battlefield of life and we would be protected from life's scars. And from this text, quite the opposite is what he promises. He will not fix every problem in our lives. He will, he will not parachute us away from pain and safeguard us from any harm. In contrast, what he calls us to is a life of self-denial and of cross-carrying. And so this sense of the rebuke given to Peter, get behind me, Satan, which we see in verse 33, is all to do with this. Peter wants the cross to be avoided. <laughs> and of course, that was one of the temptations that Jesus faced in the devil uh, in the in the desert with the devil, wasn't it? You know, don't worry, if just if you just bow down to me and just let me do all things, then you can have all the nations of the world. And so Jesus discerns the voice of the evil one in any comfort laden Christianity. The temptation still remains for you and me to circumnavigate the pain of the cross. Uh, discipleship without the willingness to suffer, without the willingness to sacrifice, should it be needed, is no discipleship at all. And the point is though, that um, if we have a king who is worth dying for, it's only a king that's worth dying for that means we have one worth living for. You know, there are so many uh, options uh, for kind of religious appeasement of our conscience out there on the market, isn't there? There are so many easier options. We could, you know, I could go to the, the Buddhist meditation centre. We've got one on Mutley Plain here in Plymouth. And if I wanted peace for my soul and comfort for my anxieties, they would tell me some really and teach me some really helpful techniques that would help me manage kind of my emotions and achieve a kind of inner equilibrium. Um, 
But that isn't what the gospel isn't just what the gospel is all about. I do believe living life with Jesus gives an inner peace that is unrivaled. I do believe that. I do believe that Jesus graciously comforts us in our weakness and in our struggle. I do believe that Jesus is the one who holds out a hand, dragging us through the pitfalls and the valleys and the steep treks of the mountainside of life. I believe all of that. But he's only worth living for if he's worth dying for as well. Does he matter that much to you and me? Is he the number one of our heart and of our lives? So deny yourself, willing to take up even a cross and then follow me, says Jesus. Now, and and I'll come into land with this. Or at least begin to anyway. Um, now, Peter can't cope with this turnaround in expectations. Now, to be fair to him, his whole theological schooling up to now was formed around the expectation that the Messiah would come and trounce the enemies and right all wrongs. So before we get to condemnatory of Peter, he's having to adapt his expectations on the spot. The sort of messiahship that Jesus talks about is anathema to Peter, and it means a complete uh, shift um, in his uh, understanding of what that's about. And, and I just wonder actually whether you and I are that quick to adapt our expectations uh, as well. I mean, sometimes wonder whether uh, we want a church that serves and meets our needs, ticks our boxes, makes us feel warm and fuzzy, nice and comfortable. Or are we willing also to deny ourselves and embrace the difficult path even alienation at times, for the sake of Christ and his mission to the world. You see, the pandemic has thrown everything upside down um, uh, and we are not going to get back to how it was. That isn't the aim. Uh, we will have to learn uh, what it means to live faithfully after Jesus as a community uh, in a world that has been somewhat reset uh, and where some things are, have been thrown out forever and new things that we will need to embrace. Um, and, and that sense of mismatch of expectations for Peter uh, is why Jesus took him aside and rebuked him. Now, Peter has moments before uh, affirmed the divinity and the messiahship of Jesus. So he's, you know, he's just kind of uh, affirmed uh, who Jesus is. That's the hinge point in Mark's gospel. It's a, a significant moment, changes everything in this portrayal for Mark of who Jesus is. But of course, Peter brings with him all his baggage of what he expects Messiah to be. And he tries to kind of load that on Jesus. And Peter learns in a humiliating way, quite frankly, that Jesus won't be limited by Peter won't be controlled by his mindset and therefore he's not going to be limited or controlled by ours also. But before we get all self-righteous about Peter, we end up doing the very same thing that he does, don't we? We try to control Jesus with our expectations, ensuring that Jesus is held captive to a nice safe vision where he can't demand too much of us and affect our comfort too much. But Peter, you see, trying to get Jesus to avoid the path that's laid out for him has kind of physically got in front of Jesus. He's trying to lead Jesus, as it were, as to how Jesus should operate. And that's why Jesus says, get behind me, get back in place, get back in line and remember that you are following me. And so the last of these demands, quite rightly, is follow me. We are to follow Jesus and not the other way around. And any attempt to squeeze him into our agenda, our plans or our will ends up with a stinging rebuke to Peter that may well be directed firmly at us. I wonder whether you've ever followed anybody and wondered where on earth they were going. Um, a few uh, months ago now, I changed the sat nav that I use in my car much to my wife's frustration, uh, because the new sat nav seems to send me on all sorts of wild goose chases. Not that we've been out too much since we've used it, to be perfectly honest, um, but it seems to uh, find all sorts of uh, uh, all crazy and um, uh, random routes that seem to involve a lot of back farm lanes um, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
And so um, I've heard uh, just in the last six months or so um, enough times coming from the passenger seat of my car. Where on earth are we going now? Um, and uh, and I think I have to say, although I, I always uh, adhere in public to full confidence in my sat nav, it's a man's prerogative. Um, uh, I have also myself thought, yeah, I do for the life of me wonder where on earth we're going um, a few times i've got stuck in flooding around the back of sherford i think uh, on my way home when surely the a38 is a much more direct route back to our house there we are um the good news for us though and actually for the world is that the messiah that demands much from us is the messiah who does know exactly where he's going and although it may well include some dips and some troughs and some extremely strange, uh, to us anyway, misdirection at times, it will also include some wonderful mountaintops and some incredible views and times of innumerable and incomparable blessing. To keep following Jesus will require effort and perseverance. It will involve sacrifice and self-suffering. But as the old hymn writer says, he knows the way he taketh and we are to walk with him. And of course, that walk will always end up in the place of glory. Yet as much as we uh, follow Jesus through a path of suffering and hardship and pain, we follow him too to where he has already gone, to the right hand of the Father, uh, a place of eternal bliss and eternal joy. And so there are three demands for us today, the three demands for us every morning we wake up, quite frankly, uh, if we want to be counted as one of Jesus' disciples. Are we willing to put ourselves second and him first, deny ourselves? Are we willing to embrace a path of hardship, so to speak, carry a cross on our back as we uh, continue to follow him, willing to suffer alongside him and with him? And are we willing to follow wherever it is that he leads, even if the journey seems a bit random and a bit uh, um, illogical at times? Are we willing to follow faithfully uh, after him wherever he leads? Those are the demands that Jesus makes on Peter, on his disciples, and those are the demands that he makes on us. It's a hard call, far from the come to Jesus and everything will be all right message. A long way from it. But you see, Jesus isn't after admirers. He's after real disciples that will follow him through and through. And so will you join me if stuttering and with a load of littered mistakes behind us and no doubt plenty more ahead, uh, we together seek to follow Jesus, carrying our cross, denying him that we might be truly his disciples and that he might, despite appearances at times, use us to honour and glorify uh, himself, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Let's just take a moment of quiet. I'm aware that I spoke for much longer than I planned to. So let's just pause for a moment. And Jesus, would you pour out your Holy Spirit on us? And as always, we ask that you would sift our hearts and minds that that which is of you for us would lodge in our heart and mind and soul and spirit, nudge away at us. In the coming days, convict us of our complacency, we pray. And that which is mere human oratory, um, let it uh, be swiftly forgotten and fall to the ground and die. Convict, inspire and help us, Holy Spirit, as we seek to faithfully follow Christ. That he might be glorified and honoured through us and with us. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, continue in prayer uh, together by praying for ourselves and for others. Uh, we've been asked uh, specifically to pray for Ben Belsham today, who is uh, in hospital. He's been in for uh, about a week um, and uh, he uh, has sepsis, which obviously is quite serious uh, and is not responding at the minute to uh, medication as i understand it now ben um believes this is a, a sense of spiritual attack um and uh, has asked us specifically to pray for him so we will do that and initially the first prayer request is that um that the infection that he's got in his kind of kidneys and around his bloodstream would subside so that surgery to investigate what's really going on can happen so we've been asked specifically to share all that with you for prayer which i'm glad to do um and um We'll remember Ben and others in, your, in our prayers. We continue to pray for David Locke recovering from a recent stroke. And um, we there may well be other people as well that I'm not aware of or have, uh, please forgive me, slipped my memory right now who require our prayers. So uh, if there are, please, uh, providing you know that they don't mind us sharing it publicly, uh, just stick it in the comments and other people will We'll gladly pray now and later um, for each one of them. And uh, at this point, just because rem rem I'm reminded of it, our monthly prayer meeting where we can pray in a much more sort of timely and deeper uh, manner is on this Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. So uh, if you uh, want to join us in prayer, you'd be very, very welcome uh, to do that as well. Let's pray together. And so, Father, we uh, continue to pray for the life of your people. And as we have just prayed a few minutes ago, we uh, ask that you would continue to lead us on with yourself to make us faithful followers after you. Uh, we talked about um, the uh, hard times of uh, discipleship and we pray for those who are uh, in the, the time of trial at the minute. Um, we pray for David Locke as he uh, recovers from uh, his uh, stroke. We pray that you would strengthen him and encourage him greatly uh, and that you would um, uh, use the medical skill uh, to seek to treat him and uh, uphold him and restore his body. We pray uh, for uh, Ben Belsham in hospital too. We uh, uh, pray that you would uh, send angels to uh, attend him and to minister to him as you did to Jesus in his weariness in the desert. And we pray for Ben that this infection would clear in the name of Jesus uh, and that uh, more investigative surgery and treatment can begin. And so we pray for your healing and your strength for Ben in uh, the uh, the short term. Pray for Pam, obviously, as well, and uh, those that are uh, worried for him, that you would uh, encourage them and strengthen them at this time. We pray for others uh, that uh, we will be aware of both within and without of our fellowship who will uh, who need God's mercy and compassion at this time. We pray, Father, you would draw near to them and encourage them. Pray that where there are worries about health, uh, that you would assure them that you are forever with them. And for those that are, uh, feel like they're carrying a heavy cross at the minute, uh, would they know that uh, you never call us to do that in isolation, but you bear with us in our suffer suffering and you encourage us and walk with us, uh, carrying our load alongside us, Lord Jesus. Continue to pray as we did earlier for uh, the end to this pandemic, which has foisted so much suffering and hardship on so many. Uh, we pray for those who are exhausted because of their constant work and the constant demands that are upon them. We pray for churches and organized, social organisations whose work is limited and who are seeking to do good and to uh, bring transformation to the world, but are restricted from doing so in some ways. We pray for those uh, who are fearful of the future and we particularly think of the upcoming budget this week and uh, what that will mean and the consequences of that for so many across business and industry. Um, we pray, uh, Father, for uh, wisdom for those that govern us in the enviable decisions that they have to take on behalf of the nation. 
And we pray above all that you would turn the tide, Lord God, of this pandemic and bring it to a swift end. We do give you thanks for the progress that's being made here in terms of vaccination. We are thankful for that and thankful for the work of scientists and medics continually. Um, we pray, Father, that you would uh, deliver uh, humanity from this perilous pandemic and that you would bring an end to suffering and hardship uh, through this horrible disease. We come against it once more in Jesus' name and seek your deliverance and your help. Lord, we make all our prayers in and through the name of Jesus, who taught his friends whenever they gathered to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, <clears throat> your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we are uh, promised, the good news is that we are promised uh, that God sustains us in our following of Jesus as we uh, seek to honour him. So he seeks to uh, uh, encourage and sustain us. We're going to sing, he will hold me fast as we close our worship this morning.
Lovely. Uh, thank you uh, so much to all our musicians this morning, um, to Paul and Nick and Paul and Penny, and uh, to Denise and Andrew for that last song. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And the blessing of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you and around you and amongst you this day and every day. Amen. Have a great week, folks. Go well. <laughs>